All right, today we got a fun problem that involves a solenoid yet again. The statement reads, show that the magnetic field of an infinite solenoid runs parallel to the axis regardless of the cross-sectional shape of the coil, as long as the shape is constant along the length of the solenoid. What is the magnitude of the field inside and outside of such a coil? Show that the, toro the toroidal field produces the solenoid field when the radius of the donut is large enough that a segment can be considered essentially straight. All right, let us first consider a diagram in order to help us understand how to approach the problem. What we want to do is draw two shapes that uh, in multivariable calculus you would consider this a cylinder but two closed loops that uh, consistently move through um, whatever without deforming the actual shape of the loop as we see here. Um, for the sake of convenience, we'll orient this on the z-axis. We'll do it in a way that it mirrors it so we can have symmetry. Um, and we'll just have some reference point R from the current in the loop, I, uh, loop one and loop two. Uh, so things to know, we're just going to have the magnetic field of a torus and a solenoid for comparison. We found those in the text. Um, now for the actual analytic part of the solution, if we orient the axes as we did in a diagram so that the field point R lies on the y-axis, or R equals 0y0, zero consider a source point at x prime, y prime, z prime, wherever on loop 1, then the separation vector r, script r, is equal to 0 minus x prime, so negative x, y minus y prime, and 0 minus z prime. And um, we note that the loop is in the xy plane, so our dl is only in dx dy in the prime coordinates. Um, if you remember from the bo Savart law, we need to take the cross product of this differential element with the separation vector. So we do that here and we get this clunky mess. Uh, remember the angle brackets are for x hat, y hat, z hat and this geometry. Um, it's just more compact that way. So now if we plug it into the bo Savart law in differential form, we see that we end up with this, um, again, kind of jungled mess of stuff. Uh, but we're not really concerned with the magnitude or anything like that right now. We're just setting up an archetype that we can compare to for loop 2. Um, so if we place the loop symmetrically down, uh, again in a kind of mirror fashion, then all we're doing is changing the sign on the Z coordinate. So we end up at a point X prime, Y prime, negative Z prime. And since that's the only thing that changes, we can flip the signs on them uh, for DB2. And when we add them together, we notice that they cancel. And we note that we're getting a field and only the Z component, which is inside both of the loops, which is the result we found for a circular solenoid. So that proves the point of this exercise. Um, so with the Ampere's Law, we can quickly show that this field inside is exactly equal to mu in I in the z-hat direction and zero outside. That's a pretty cool result to have, and I'm sure in certain scenarios and circuits or something like that where you need a torus or a, um, or a solenoid, that these things come in handy quite a lot. Um, now, as far as the toroidal field or toroid shape, the torus... If we have the donut large enough to where the cross section seems consistent, then big N over two pi s is just little n, where the number of where it's the number of turns per unit length, where two pi s is the circumference divided by n, the number in that circumference. So that makes sense geometrically. We just need to have, um, and we show that that yields the B field of a solenoid. Um, but we just need to make sure that this uh, can only be applied if the uh, radius of the toroid is large enough to where the circumference is essentially flat over that cross-section.